أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقعدوا بكل صراط توعدون وتصدون عن سبيل الله من آمن به وتبغونها عوجا عوجا واذكروا إذ كنتم قليلا فكثركم وَانظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُفْسِدِينَ وَإِنْ كَانَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ آمَنُوا بِالَّذِي أُرْسِلْتُ بِهِ وَطَائِفَةٌ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا فَاصْبِرُوا فاصبروا حتى يحكم الله بيننا وهو خير الحاكمين <laughs> yes, you stretch the vowel here. Instead of starting from Yukminu, it would have been better if you would have started from Wata. Yeah. All right. Sadaqallahul Azim. All right. Alhamdulillah. Just eight is complete. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So. No, you have to say Alhamdulillah. Mm, I will say Yarhamukallah. Now you will say Ya. Ya Yahdikumullah. That's it. All right. We will start just nine. Then after them, after the Yambiya mentioned earlier, we sent Musa alayhi salam with the Varayat. Nine miracles as mentioned in the forthcoming verses to Fir'aun and his chieftains, ministers. But they were unjust towards them. They rejected these miracles. See what was the result of those who spread corruption. They were destroyed by Allah's punishment. 
Musa alayhi salam said, O oh, Fir'aun, indeed I am a Rasul from the Rabb of the universe. It is only right that I attribute the truth only to Allah. I have come to you with a clear sign, miracle from your Rabb, to prove that I am his messenger. So send the Bani Israel with me after releasing them from forced labor and slavery. He, Fir'aun, said, if you have come with some sign, a miracle to prove that you are a prophet, then show it to us if you are from the truthful ones, true in your claim that you are the Rasul of Allah. So he, Musa salam, threw down his staff, the first miracle, and it suddenly became a terrifying and huge serpent in no uncertain terms, running with mouth open towards Fir'aun. And when he, Musa salam, drew forth his hand from beneath his armpit, it suddenly became shining bright for all to see the second miracle. Echoing Pharaoh's feelings because they were too proud to accept the miracles, the chieftains, ministers from Pharaoh's nation said, He is truly an intelligent, skillful magician. He intends to remove you from your land so that do you instruct us to do with him? They replied, Detain him and his brother while you dispatch callers throughout the towns, who will bring to you every learned, clever, expert magician to challenge Musa a.s. When the magicians were gathered together, they came to Pharaoh and asked, Will we receive some grand prize if we are victory, victorious over Musa a.s.? He, Pharaoh, replied, Certainly, and in addition to that, you will also be of those brought close to me in my grand court. They, the, they, the magicians, said, O Musa, Either you throw your staff first, or we will be the ones to throw our ropes and staffs first. He, Musa alayhi salam, said, he throw first, you throw first. When they threw, they mesmerized the people's eyes, made the people think that the ropes and staffs were snakes, frightened them, and displayed magic, wonderful magic, a great illusion. All right. A great lesson to be learned, all the entertainment industry, the whole entertainment industry, whether it is the movie industry or the video game industry or whatever, they also create illusions. Whatever they show us, that is not reality. And the majority of the humans are mesmerized in this illusion. So, <clears throat> what is the overall message of the media disobedience to elders disobedient to god rebellion against god and uh, sens oh, sensationalism and uh, adultery and uh, drugs and crime sin these are the messages these are the themes of the media whether it be the video games or it can be the uh, the television or the movie industry very little uh, part of it is moral based very few people are decent ones who are creating a content which can uh, which is which can say which you can say it is either neutral or it is good the majority of the content is darker at the darker side now <clears throat> you may have heard the program american idol i t o l same is similar name is uh, there is a program with the same name indian idol it is held in in india and in other countries british idol and in other countries yeah yeah so what is idol what does idol mean what do what do you think i d o l what is the meaning of idol yeah
Yeah, that's it. That's it. An image worshipped as a god. Now, that's a problematic thing. American Idol, what does it mean? It means an American person who is being worshipped. So, so, today's singers and today's media people are like fake gods who are being indirectly worshipped by the masses. Whatever they wear, the people want to wear it. Whatever uh, they do, that becomes a trend, that becomes a fashion. Whatever they say, the people obey them. So, the priests and the monks in ancient times used statues and used imaginary gods and imaginary idols in order to make a fool of the masses. So, they would, they would invent things out of their own desires. The politicians would tell them and uh, they would collaborate with them and they would uh, tell them that I will give you this much money and I will give you wealth and land. You just have to convince the people that this is part of religion. And that uh, policy or that thing which they used to tell them that would benefit the politicians and the elite of that society. So, there was a collaboration between the priest, the religious class, and the political elite of, us, of the society. So now what is happening, those idols are living humans using the media as a tool to make a fool of the people so that the majority uh, starts sleeping and they are mesmerized in their own bubble so much that don't they, don't, they don't care what is the American government doing in Iraq or in Afghanistan, whether the war is justified or not, whether there are really weapons of mass destruction or not, whether uh, it is, it is uh, good enough to kill innocent people or not, whether it is, it is nice enough to do war crimes or not. Uh, so, whatever they do, uh, the government does not want people to realize it and they don't want people to protest. So that is why they have created a great, grander entertainment industry and it is not limited to United States. It also applies on Pakistan. It also applies on India. It also applies on other countries, in Ch on China also and, and, and other parts of the world. So... This is what is entertainment industry is doing, destroying the family unit, so that when the Antichrist comes, when the Dajjal comes, people are so messed up in their minds, they are so uh, messed up in, in the family unit, they, uh, uh, a lot of dirt has been filled up, they are, their minds are filled up with filth so much that they are deluded. They are delusional. The family unit is destroyed. Many people are becoming gays. Uh, human race is not being uh, advanced because of gayism and uh, homosexuality and whatever. And uh, whatever families are left, the children don't obey them. The children don't obey and listen to the parents because... Uh, the music industry, the media is teaching them to do, to do that. Uh, so, uh, in the name of talent, in the name of entertainment, in the name of enjoyment, those negative messages are being installed on the subconscious minds. So now, the roads are very, very easy for the Jal to manipulate, to make a fool and make a mockery out of humanity. And Shaitan is laughing that the majority will go to hell with me. So I will go to hell, but they will also go to hell. So we can relate 
if we uh, we can relate the ancient stories with modern times now if you focus on on the verse that uh, those magicians threw ropes in front of people but they cast it spell when they cast a spell there was an illusion created in the eyes of the people the people thought these are snakes even prophet musa alaihissalam thought these are snakes so the magic affected prophet musa's vision also it is not limited to our common people it, the magic also affects prophets to an extent even though they are very powerful spiritual beings so it means that the magic was very powerful it was a powerful illusion which could uh, throw which could create illusion for the prophet as well it is not a common magic so then allah told musa inspired musa alaihi salam to throw his staff don't worry so what does it mean if we have strong connection with allah allah will inspire us to get out or get out of the situation and not be hypnotized and not be uh, mind controlled by the media how will we do so how will we develop connection with allah that is why we are learning the quran quran is the miracle in musa's time prophet musa alaihi salam's time the serpent was the miracle the staff was the miracle uh, the hand under the armpit of prophet musa alaihi salam that was the miracle there were other miracles as well <coughs> in today's time what is the miracle the remaining miracle the last miracle that is the quran so what does it mean the speech of the quran the language of the quran the depth of the quran the meaning of the quran the spirituality of the quran the delicacy and the meticulous and beautiful style of the quran is so magnificent that it can destroy any mesmerization or any hypnotism done by the media so when a true person of allah a true representative of allah a preacher a person a dai a person who will be practicing islam he will be pure in his heart when he will start preaching about quran people will start listening to him and they will get out of the slumber which has occurred due to this propaganda machine this media worldwide media which is uh, currently doing so to be able to study the quran and the sunna as well and to be able to teach it is a great honor and it is one of the greatest deeds which and especially in today's times where people are forgetting the quran where people are neglecting the religion especially in these times where they are taking the quran for granted and why they are taking it for granted because they don't know the, they don't understand the meaning of the quran first of all they don't know the tajweed when they don't know the tajweed they pronounce the words wrongly when they pronounce the words wrongly there is no light and nur or enlightenment generated from the words which they speak our words have power over us and around our surroundings on our souls when our words have power over us then obviously we have to pronounce the words properly in order to have the proper effect because quran is not a common speech in english and in other languages we can ignore the mistakes we can ignore the grammatical mistakes we can ignore the pronunciation if it is comprehensible understandable we can understand the message even if the other person is uh, not using correct grammar however in the quran even a small change of the letter of the alphabet even a small change of pronunciation if we are reading ha instead of ha or if we are reading ha instead of ha the meaning will be changed when the meaning is changed obviously it will not be able to enlighten us properly our souls will not be enlightened and when our souls will not be enlightened then we are vulnerable in front of the jaws attacks in front of media attacks because our vision is not clear we are 
being affected by the illusion which has been created by the media, brainwashing the people. So they say that the Iraqis have mass destruction and the people are saying, yo, destroy them, destroy them. When they go, they, they say, we found nothing. Sorry. After killing your own soldiers, your president says, your president says, sorry. So, uh, coming to the topic, coming to the topic, coming back to the topic. We can relate every story in the Quran with the current times and if we understand it properly, then inshallah, we will live our life according to the teachings of Islam. Are you getting my point, Jibrail? All right. Uh, I, so, it took, uh, I, I took uh, the whole time of yours. I couldn't teach Aziza. Inshallah, tomorrow I will teach Aziza. All right. Okay, inshallah. Wish you best of luck. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.